Okay, on page seven, we have two questions. One is with a, with a calculator and one is without a calculator. So in this first problem um, that we're gonna use our calculator because we'll again be storing our K value. It says that during a certain epidemic, the number of people that are affected at any time increases at a rate that is proportional to the number of people that are infected. Okay, so if the number of people affected increases at a rate proportional to the number of people infected, this is gonna be an exponential growth problem, I think. Um, so that's something that you just need to think about, because if it's a decrease at a rate of proportional, that'd be exponential decay. So you kind of need to know what value you're looking for when it comes to your constant of variation or your, your K value. Okay, so it says, if a thousand people are infected when the epidemic is first discovered, okay, and then, um, yeah, and then 1,200 are infected seven days later, how many people are infected 12 days after the epidemic is first discovered? Okay, so we have plenty of information here. Um, what they're telling us is that y of zero is equal to 1,000. This is actually going to be my C value, that's my initial amount. Then y of seven is 1,200. So this is important because it's gonna help me find my K value. So if we're using y is equal to C e to the kt, we know this value. It's 1,000. So we're using y is equal to 1,000, or basically I should say y of t. This point out is not a very good one. y of t is equal to 1,000 e to the kt. So now I can find my k value and store that in my calculator because this is a calculator problem. So they're saying that we have 1,200 is equal to 1,000 e to the 7k divided by 1,000. So when I divide by 1,000, what does that give me? Divide by 1,000. 6 over 5? 6 over 5 is equal to e to the 7k. Take the natural log. Now you notice here these are exact values, so we have to be careful is equal to seven times K. So K is going to be equal to one over seven, natural log of six fifths. So now we have defined this. So let's go into our calculator. Again, practicing how we store. Clear this out. One over seven, natural log. I'll grab my fraction, six over five. Okay, store, which is to the left of the four, in between the one and the four. Alpha, K, override what I had in there before, press enter. Exponential growth, so it matches. Okay, so now we have our general, or our specific formula here. Y is equal to 1,000 E to the K times T, and we have our K value is defined. I know it's not needed for this problem, but it helps me. And this should be y of t. I keep forgetting that, y of t. Okay, so now what we want to know is how many people after 12 days. So do we know this or do we know this? Okay, this is our unknown. This is what we know, 12 days. So we want to know what is y of t, meaning how many people is equal to 1,000. This is an easier problem, e to the k, which is defined times 12, okay? So now all we have to do is plug this in. So we've got 1,000 uh, e to the, let's go grab my k value, times 12. Or you could write 12k, it doesn't really matter. So 1366.9, 1366, boom, see, this is it. Okay, all right, in this next problem, no calculator. So it says, let P of T represent the number of wolves in a population at time T where T is greater than zero. Okay, can't have less than zero years, so we're looking at the number of wolves, P of T, number of wolves, T years, T is greater than or equal to zero. The population P of T is increasing at a rate that is directly proportional to this formula right here. Okay, where the constant of proportionality is k. So here's the deal. Typically we're saying, um, all right, uh, 
we're going to use y is equal to ce to the kt, but for the specific population problem, they actually give us a formula. And more specifically, it says p of t, meaning the number of wolves in this population is increasing at a given rate. Okay, so that means this is the derivative. Okay, so um, what we need to do is if p of 0, meaning the initial amount, is equal to 500, it's important, find p of t in terms of t and k. So they want our formula. Okay, so if they want our general formula, our specific formula to this problem, but general so that we can find anything else, we need to uh, go through um, a first. So let's take a look at a. So p of t is increasing at a rate that is directly proportional to this formula directly proportional, and k is our constant of proportionality. So what they're saying is that p prime of t is equal to k, constant of proportionality, times 800 minus, and p of t is just the formula for the number of wolves, so I'm just going to put it as p so I don't have to keep writing p of t, p of t. So I actually need to use separation of variables to integrate this so that I can solve. So I need to rewrite this first as d of p meaning the population with respect to time is going to be equal to um, k, which is a constant, times 800 minus p. Okay, so that means I need to move this over here and this over here. So we have 1 over 800 minus p dp is equal to k dt. And I left a little bit of space here because we've dealt with this before. We actually need to integrate both sides. Okay, so I'm going to integrate this and integrate this. When we integrate this, this is actually a u sub problem, even though you know it's going to be a natural log, you have to be really, really careful. So if I squeeze this in, let's say right here, I say u is equal to 800 minus p. Um, du is equal to, this is a constant, so the derivative of that is 0, so this is negative dp, but I actually need to get rid of dp, so that means I need to divide. Okay, so what we have here is negative du, so I'm just going to switch this because I don't have any room. So it is the integral, the, excuse me, the opposite of the integral of 1 over u du is equal to, and I'll integrate this side, it's kt plus c. Integrate this, it's the natural log of u, resubstitute. Negative natural log of the absolute value of 800 minus p is equal to kt plus c. Okay, since we're looking for p of t, we actually have to start to solve. And whenever you are um, exponentiating to get rid of the natural log, this coefficient has to be positive. So that means I need to multiply through by a negative. So we're dealing with, let's see, the natural log of the absolute value of 800 minus p is equal to negative kt minus c. I just multiplied through by a negative 1 to get rid of this whole thing. Okay. Exponentiate both sides, and what's going to happen here is we have the absolute value of 800 minus p is equal to, and I'm going to write this separate, e to the negative c times e to the negative kt. Okay? So here, this is just a constant. It's a coefficient for my absolute value. So remember, this could be plus or minus. So remember, this whole thing becomes a negative c. But then here I deal with the plus or minus, so it's just going to become one big fat c. So I have 800 minus p. This would be plus or minus, but because this is negative, we're just going to say this is c e to the negative kt. Okay, so now what do we have? We need to figure out what p of t is going to be, and we need to solve for some specific pieces of information, meaning I need my c value. Okay, so they're saying that p of 0 is equal to 500. That's in part a. It's all the way at the top right here. I'm solving for this. Okay, so what that means is at time 0, p is 500. So you have 800 minus 500 is equal to c e 
to the negative k times 0. This goes away, and we're saying that c is equal to 300. So now I can turn around and plug this in up here to get p of t in terms of k and t. So if I do this step by step, we basically have um, 800 minus p is equal to 300 e to the negative kt. We want to solve for p. That's what we're looking for. They want p of t okay, in terms of k and t. So here, if I subtract 800, you have negative p is equal to 300 e to the negative kt minus 800, but I need to multiply through by a negative. So what we're going to say is that p of t is equal to 800 minus 300 e to the negative kt. This is what we were looking for. I know it's squeezed in down there. Okay, and I'll write it at the top. Okay, so we solved for that. That was kind of a long part of the problem. So I'm going to write it right here so that I have it. So P of T is equal to 800 minus 300 E to the negative KT. So this is what I need, okay, because now it's asking us to find K in part B. So we need this. Okay? All right, so if P of 2 is 700, meaning in two years the population of those wolves is 700, find K. So what I can do is P of T is 700. So they say that P of 2 is equal to 700, which is equal to 800 minus 300, well, E to the negative 2K. Just plug that in. So really, I'm just looking at this part. So we're going to subtract 800. So this is negative 100 is equal to negative 300 e to the negative 2k. Divide by negative 300. So this is what, 1 third is equal to e to the negative 2k. Take the natural log. Natural log of 1 third is equal to negative 2k. Now, when you're looking at this, some of you might be thinking that I thought this was an exponential growth and this looks like it's positive, but this is something you need to think about. Think about the natural log graph, okay, like this. The natural log graph goes like this, right? So this right here is the point one zero. When this is one third, these values are negative. So when I multiply by a negative one half, my k value is actually positive. So here we're saying that k is equal to negative one half times the natural log of one third, which is actually a positive value. So you have to be careful because this could be deceiving because one third is in here. It's actually like right here. So it's going to be a negative y value. Okay? So there's your k value. Part C. Last one, find the limit as t approaches infinity, meaning the time gets infinitely larger, of p of t. Okay, well, we have p of t. p of t is this crazy thing right here. So we want to evaluate, let's see, the limit as t approaches infinity of 800 minus 300 e to the negative 2k, or excuse me, negative kt. Mm -hmm. I think I need a new white out. Negative kt. Okay, so um, let me rewrite this because now this is just a, these are just numbers. So you have the limit as t approaches positive infinity of 800 minus 300 over e to the kt. So I got rid of that negative. And really what I'm looking for is what's happening as my time continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger, meaning infinitely larger. So if, if I put in 
an infinitely large number, okay? What we're going to have, I'm making a substitution. So, I mean, you can see what's going to happen with the trend if you put in 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. But conceptually, we've talked about this before. If I use direct substitution, which means I can get rid of the limit, it's 800 minus 300 divided by E, which remember is a number, 2.7, times um, positive infinity times K, meaning whatever this number is, when I find K, won't that number just continue to get larger? So if this is going to be a super big number because it's 2.7 times some infinitely large number, and 300 is divided by that, what's going to happen to this number? Basically, it's going to approach zero and become equal to zero. So it's 800 minus zero. So then the answer here is just 800.